We're singing hi neighbor, hi neighbor, what do you know and what do you say? Hi neighbor, hi neighbor, throw all your worries away. Can he do entertain you in the barber shop style? So throw your cares and troubles. Thank you for joining me here in my sitting room next to this idyllic, if not slightly dangerous looking fire, so that I may welcome you to this unusual concert from the musicians and their friends of St Paul's Episcopal Church in Sparks. Unusual firstly because the concert brings together instruments you don't normally hear in the same programme. Piano, barbershop, marimba and bagpipes. And it's also unusual because you are not in the church to hear the music, and I am not in the church to introduce the music, and in fact, as you watch this, literally nobody is in the church, because we felt it would be in the interests of everyone's health if we pre-recorded this concert. All the footage you see tonight has been recorded in accordance with the Governor of Nevada's state mandate, and all the ensembles ha have adhered to strict social distancing and mask protocols when they were not being recorded, and sometimes when they were. We may not be able to see each other, but we are still here together. So please use the Facebook chat feature that should be around here to comment, ask questions, and generally interact with one another during the concert. My name is Ben Gallagher, and I will be your host this evening. Think of me as the notes in the concert programme, but with an authoritative accent. Now you just heard Adam Teachout, Kevin Shoemaker, J.P. DeChambeau and Ken Martin singing the barbershop classic High Neighbor by Walter Latsko. This group have only been singing together since August, but already have a substantial repertoire and some impressive hats. And normally you would see them perform live in those hats and the concert attire you would expect from a barbershop quartet. However, they like to rehearse in gym shorts and t-shirts as you will now see when we watch a pre-recorded rehearsal of Adam, Kevin, JP and Ken singing Ray Stevens' Have a Little Talk with Myself. Lately I have noticed all my friends avoiding me and that girl who loves me a man saying goodbye. My whole world is coming apart and falling in on me and I guess you doubt I know the reason why. Lately I've been living for nobody else but me Let my selfish ego take a man, take a man. Lately I've been giving in to pride and vanity And I guess I let it get the upper hand And I think it's just about time to have, have a little talk with myself Have a little talk with myself Self-examination, a little attitude, direction, a little soul search and inspection. Start heading in the right direction. Take a little walk. Take a little walk. Have a little talk with myself. Do 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 do. Bum 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 bum. Wah wah. I put importance on the wrong things in this life, and my outlook has twisted point of view. All you reap with vanity is heartache and strife Without love and friendship you can make it through And I think it's just about time to Have a little talk with myself Have a little talk with myself A little self-examination A little 
private conversation, little attitude and direction, blue soul search and inspection, start in the right direction, pay lies and recognize, and nice lies and criticize, socialize and organize, and summarize and years to the 1840s. When I picture the composers from this period, I imagine mighty, stoic gentlemen honing their craft and producing works of music to stir the soul and toy with our emotions. I certainly don't picture them watching a puppy chasing its tail and thinking, I could probably write a piece of music about this. And yet, that is exactly what the next piece is all about. Chopin's Valse du Petit Chien, or Waltz for the Puppy, is better known by another name, the Minute Waltz. Its alternative title is slightly confusing, because although it is a fast piece, it's not meant to be played in a minute. It should actually be called the Minute Waltz, because it's quite short. But somewhere along the line, someone misread it, and the rest is history. It will be performed tonight by Brittany Kirk from a piano somewhere in Utah. Brittany has been a registered piano technician, tuning and fixing the instruments for the past 14 years. But it's her Bachelor of Arts in Piano Performance that she'll be demonstrating tonight, as she performs the Waltz in D-flat major, that's five flats, by Chopin. This evening's concert is being performed in aid of the food pantry at St Paul's. This service has been around and busy for years, but has never been more in demand than right now. When the food pantry is open, all walks of life appear to obtain groceries at no cost so that they can feed themselves and their families, especially as so many of them have lost their jobs or livelihoods as a result of the ongoing pandemic. If you enjoy this concert, or frankly, even if you don't, please consider donating something to this worthwhile organisation. 
Either follow the link that you should see in the description or chat log for this event, or simply text COMMUNITY, that's C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y, to 88793. Now I imagine you would probably like to hear a bit more music now. How about some marimba? How about a marimba piece about somebody's mother-in-law? Now, whereas most people seem to write jokes or stories to belittle and tease their partner's parents, you won't find me doing that. In fact, my mother-in-law comes to my house every Christmas. And maybe this year I'll let her in. Genuinely, I'm quite fond of my mother-in-law, and composer Paul Smadbeck was obviously quite fond of his. After she died, he wrote this beautiful piece for marimba in her memory. It will be performed tonight by Robert Strong, Robert comes from Clovis, California, which he claims is famous for its rodeo and terrible air pollution. Not surprisingly then, he moved to Reno in 2018 with his fiancée, and when he isn't drinking whiskey or eating tri-tip with his bare hands, I assure you he told me to say that, he has the incredible job title as Saxophone Janitor at Blue Note B's Horn Shop. This is Virginia Tate by Paul Smadbeck.
stories say the marimba was made by an African goddess. This next instrument was made by turning a sheep inside out. The bagpipe, literally meaning big pipe, is the only known instrument to have been used as a weapon of war. Since they could be heard from over 10 miles away, they were played to scare off the enemies as they approached. So effective were they that they were banned in Scotland in 1560 and 1746. People were literally hanged for being in possession of bagpipes. These days, people are a little more favourable towards the instrument. The Queen uses her personal piper to wake her up in the morning. As a result, her husband famously despises the instrument. There are also now more bagpipers in the US than there are in Scotland, and you're going to hear from one of them right now. Brian Kirk is an electrical engineer by trade, but since there aren't many pieces of music written for electrical engineers, you'll be pleased to hear that he has also been playing the bagpipes since the year 2000. The past two decades have seen him leading the clans of the Tecumseh Pipes and Drums, but most impressively, he was also the musical director for the Pipes and Drums of Canada during a tour of Scotland in 2015. There, he got to perform and meet the Queen, who enjoyed it very much, and also her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, who perhaps did not. But I'm sure you will enjoy a selection of pipe music from Brian Kirk right now. <laughs>
Lusa by Emmanuel Sejourne is a piece of music for the marimba and vibraphone, inspired by Spanish flamenco music. Now, there's a simple difference between the two instruments. The marimba is wooden and produces dark, mellow and resonant sounds. The vibraphone is made from aluminum and produces the sounds of a Dutch jazz club in the 1970s. This duet will be performed by Elisa Teachout and Robert Strong. Robert, we met before, and Elisa should be no stranger to the people of St Paul's either, because she has expertly managed the choir for the past couple of years. However, in her spare time, she is the CEO, accountant, teacher, janitor and pet wrangler for her own private piano and percussion music teaching studio. Ladies, gentlemen, and the teacher's cocker spaniels, Robert and Elisa.
Between 1901 and 1904, composer Vaughan Williams took a collection of poems by Robert Louis Stevenson of Treasure Island fame and produced Songs of Travel, a musical journey made up of nine interconnecting tunes. Tonight, Kevin Shoemaker of Barbershop Quartet fame will sing the first of these songs, The Vagabond, in which we are introduced to a traveller as they make their way through the landscape of the English countryside and the English weather. Evelyn Glennie is one of the world's most famous percussionists. What makes her remarkable is not just her technical skill and musical interpretation, which would be meritorious enough on their own, but sh that she shares these abilities while being entirely deaf. Glennie travels the world performing renowned music by renowned composers with renowned orchestras. Additionally, she also writes renowned music of her own, like this piece, A Little Prayer. It was written when Glennie was only 13 years old and will be performed by Melinda Griffin. Melinda is a strong believer that music can move souls and heal emotional wounds and has felt that way since she started learning to play the piano at age 8 and then the marimba at 10. This love of music has driven her to perform with the Bainbridge Island Orchestra and the Bremerton Symphony Orchestra. But tonight she is performing Evelyn Glennie's A Little Prayer for You.
If I asked you to name a song sung by Judy Garland in a 1940s movie, I imagine you would say Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Unfortunately, you'd be wrong because The Wizard of Oz was released in 1939. Instead, I'm referring to a movie called Girl Crazy, and although it may not be as well known as Dorothy's journey along the yellow brick road, the music by Ira and George Gershwin has remained popular for the better part of a century. Returning to the piano, here is Brittany Kirk with I Got Rhythm. writing my introductions to these pieces, I like to look around the internet for interesting facts and stories. Some descriptions appear over and over again, such as classic, or emotional, or uplifting. This next piece came with a description I don't believe I've ever seen before. A workout for marimba. So, here to exercise her musical skill is Elisa with Casey Kangalosi's White Knuckle Stroll.
We're sticking with the marimba, but adding a few more people to it. Albeit far short of the world record for the largest marimba ensemble, which currently stands at 408 people. Nevertheless, in today's climate, three people around a single instrument is probably enough. Arranged by Elisa, and featuring herself, Robert, and Melinda in costume, What's This, composed and sung by Danny Elfman in the movie Nightmare Before Christmas, will nicely fill that awkward void we're in between Halloween and the Advent season. of love is romantic in nearly any language. In French, it's rêve d'amour. In Italian, sogne d'amour. Even in Norwegian, it's dromie und schialit. But in German, in German, it translates to Liebestraum. And for some reason, it's the translation that you'll find attached to many different pieces of music. None more famous than this waltz, number three in A-flat major, performed by Bittney, composed by Liszt.
Picture the scene. It's 2 a.m. in Las Vegas in 1967. You've just finished performing a show, and now you find yourself in a studio ready to record your next song. Around you are the recording technicians, the song's composers Bob Thiel and George David Weiss, and a full orchestra. You expected to see the head of the record label who was excited to photograph the session. However, unbeknownst to you, he's been locked out of the studio in a soundproof room because he hated the song so much he became angry and violent. You are Louis Armstrong, and the song is What a Wonderful World. Tonight, it will be performed by an award-winning tenor who is about to graduate from UNR with a Bachelor's in Music Education. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Teachout. Itchy Fingers, Clumsy Lover is the title of our next and final piece, and not the title of my autobiography. Now I either pause there for laughter or awkward silence. It's a fairly modern tune for the bagpipe. This piece was written by the American Vogues, who come from that famous Scottish town of Forney in Texas, in the USA. But tonight it will be performed by Brian on the pipes and Elisa on the drums.
come to the end of our concert, but don't switch off just yet. If you enjoyed it, please consider donating funds to the food pantry at St Paul's. If you hated it, I commend you for continuing to watch, but please express your hatred by donating to the food pantry at St Paul's. You can click on the link that should be around here, or here, somewhere, or text the word COMMUNITY to 88793. I'd like to thank in alphabetical order Adam, Elisa, Brian, Brittany, JP, Ken, Kevin, Melinda and Robert for being part of the logistical nightmare that was this concert and gifting us truly excellent musical performances. I'd also like to thank Father Kirk and St Paul's Episcopal Church for allowing us to use the facilities in a responsible and socially distanced way. And I'd also like to thank you all for watching wherever you are. It's traditional for me to end these concerts by telling you to go away, but you already have. So instead, I'll just say good night from me and good night from these people.